Islam-driven terrorism has dominated the history of Islam, beginning with the murder of three of the first four caliphs who succeeded Muhammad. Islamic terrorism has been one of the most active volcanoes domestically, regionally, and globally since the initial eruption of the Islamic lava in the 7th century. Historically, all Arab regimes have achieved, sustained, and eventually lost power through domestic violence, subversion, or terrorism. The lava of Islam-driven terrorism has consumed mostly Muslims in the abode of Islam. But, irrespective of Israeli policies and the Palestinian issue, it aims to sweep the abode of the infidel and is currently spreading into the streets of the USA, Europe, Russia, China, India, Africa, Asia, and Australia. Currently, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and Libya have become major platforms of Islamic terrorism and battlegrounds of rival Islamic terror organizations. All pro-US Arab regimes, such as Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, and the UAE face clear and present lethal Islamic terror threats. Iran and Saudi Arabia, the two leading world bankers of Islamic terrorism, confront each other militarily, economically, ideologically, and religiously. The House of Saud has realized the self-destructive nature of its substantial support of Islamic terrorism. Islam-driven terrorism has been nurtured by the recent Arab tsunami, which has intensified the 1,400-year-old intra-Muslim fragmentation, unpredictability, instability, intolerance, subversion, terrorism, and the impermanent nature of Islamic regimes, their policies, and agreements. Contrary to conventional wisdom, the 14 centuries of volcanic Islam-driven terrorism has not been triggered by social and economic deprivation, but by the megalomaniacal, supremacist, intolerant, anti-democratic, repressive, non-negotiable, and eternal aspiration led by educated Islamic elites to force the world of the infidel and the apostate to submit to Islam, supposedly the only religion divinely ordained to rule the world. According to the Quran, Islam is the only worthy, legitimate successor to Abrahamic and Mosaic Judaism. Thus, the subordination of humanity to the legacy of Muhammad should be achieved, preferably via nonviolent means, dawah, deceit, double talk, taqiyya, and immigration, hijra. But in face of defiant infidels and apostates, the believers must resort to non-merciful violence, jihad, subversion, breach of international accords, and terrorism. Unlike the Western definition of terrorism, the deliberate and systematic targeting of civilians, the Quranic definition of terrorist, irhab, is the derivative of the verb arhaba, to terrify, scare, which is a tactic employed against the infidel in order to advance the goals of Islam, according to the Quran, Surah 8, verse 60. The Islamic bottom line is, that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. As demonstrated by the 1400-year-old track record of Islamic violence, terrorism, and lack of intra-Muslim peaceful coexistence, Islam has never considered itself to be a religion of peace as defined by Western dictionaries and political correctness. According to Muhammad's legacy, the term Salam, a derivative of the same root as Islam, is employed when addressing fellow Muslims, but not when addressing non-Muslims, unless constrained by temporary, military, economic, or political inferiority. Furthermore, Arab Muslim societies invoke Quranic verses and Islamic historical precedents as guidelines for contemporary, daily, 
personal, tribal, religion, regional, and national conduct. For example, according to the Quran, Surah 20, verses 47 and 48, peace be on whoever follows the guidance of Allah and punishment shall afflict those who deny and turn their back on Allah. Thus, Salam is reserved only for those who submit, surrender themselves to Islam, while those who renege on their commitment to Islam are doomed. Moreover, any agreement with the infidel is defined as sulh, hudna, a tenuous truce of limited duration until the balance of power facilitates total submission of the infidel to Islam. According to Hebrew University professor Moshe Sharon, a world-renowned authority on Islam, Islam came to being as a fighting religion. Muhammad imposed his authority by means of his military strength. Islam was born in order to rule, as is only fitting for the religion of Allah, which is one and exclusive. The laws of jihad form the basis of the relations between the Muslim world and the West. The only possible relations between Muslims and non-Muslims are war or a limited ceasefire. Jihad is the strategy, and therefore agreements are a tactical interlude in the war against the infidel. An agreement which contains anything beyond a limited armistice or ceasefire is either provisional or nil and void. These Islamic principles have been promoted in Muslim and Western countries by Muslim educators and imams in mosques, kindergartens, schools, civic organizations, and the prison systems, which have become the most effective generators of terrorists. The next video will highlight Islamic terrorism in host non-Muslim countries.